the, the story of the film actually happened to you, your shoes got stolen. Uh, what were the differences uh, between like your life and the film? Um, I did not go after the guys. <laughs> um, that, that would have been a very short film. Um, but, yeah, there, I mean, there's other aspects of the story in my life and, you know, family and uh, friends and stories of my friends that I incorporate, you know, influenced, um, uh, the film. So, especially in writing, I think, you know, it's like a, a, th a third of the characters are you, a third are, you're someone you know, and a third is your imagination. Um, and this is probably more so me and people I know. Um, but yeah, I didn't, well, I don't want to spoil anything, so <laughs> I won't, I won't say what I did and didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. uh, the central dynamic of the, the central trio, uh, seems really important to the film. Was it hard to, like, what was it like, the auditioning process and all that, was it? Oh, it was, it was actually really, really easy getting the chemistry and, uh, actually we, we were all in the same audition room, um, together. Uh, ja King and, and Chris and myself. So, you know, when we were all in there, we're wondering who he was. Uh, we never, we didn't know who the director was. We're just, just taking action. I thought I was from like people. younger than them. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, who's this guy? Um, he didn't have the five o'clock shadow. It was I, fresh. Yeah. It was That's fresh what shade. happened. I got so embarrassed, I had to let my beard grow out. <laughs> and um, I think right after that audition, me and Chris, we got each other's numbers and. And um, I remember going up to Oakland and, and him texting me like, are you here? And we just knew immediately. And I knew Ja King was out there. He was just perfect for the role. So, yeah. Yeah, but we, I mean, I would say it wasn't that easy on my end, for sure. Uh, we went through hundreds and hundreds of, of kids and we did street casting as well. And the rest of the movie is populated with kids from the neighborhood from um that we you know met youth centers are literally on the streets and just like want to be in a movie um but the the three the three central relationship um was really hard to find you know the and once we did put them in a room together and had a chemistry read it was quite clear that they were already acting like these characters <laughs> that were were in this were on the were on the page so Mahershal Ali uh Obviously, went on to win an Oscar for Moonlight. Um, what was it like having him on set? It was uh, amazing. Yeah, he um, at the time was on House of Cards, and he actually got his hands on the script. And I didn't realize it, but he was also from Oakland Bay Area, so he was immediately was like, "Let's talk and meet," and we shared stories about growing up, and it was like whatever you need, whatever you want. So I was like really lucky to have him um, come out to set because he's just great, like a great guy and just a really calming presence. Um, truly, he's been working on his craft for, I don't know, 20 plus years. So you can tell and he's, it's really inspiring working with someone who's been doing it for so long and understands, you know, the how to, how to, how to put a scene together and like create this character. And just, yeah. We definitely felt his presence whenever he would walk into the room uh, on and off camera. Uh, and he was very, very genuine and giving us a lot of advice and, you know, how to, how to be young actors in the business. So he was really, really cool, really genuine. Uh, music plays quite an important role in the sort of chapters of the film. Uh, was that all in the script? Like, did he choose all of the stuff beforehand? Um, yeah, a lot of the music well, the bigger music cues were written in, like uh, even like the rap voiceover is actually I didn't even know CJ then, but was Biggie's party and bullshit mm -hmm. and, um, but the the chapters I always knew were gonna be there to kind of have an for the hero's journey this episodic nature, and I wanted them to be foreshadowing, but also like I was kept going back to like what's the hip hop version, without saying chapter one, I just wanted a straight up classic quote. So I try to, they actually changed a little bit during the, the edit, just for pacing. And then I realized some, some, some stuff, you know, wasn't classic enough, you know, and, or it was too confusing for, you know, for example, I think stuff, stuff in there now is like, not as fresh to death. It's like, if you, even if you don't know, you know, 
Nazriel Matter, you could anyone could just read it and be like, huh, <laughs> foreshadowing, <laughs> um, or, or or take what they they want from it. So um, that was the thought behind the story, since it was a very um, episodic in nature. Did you know beforehand that there was going to be like? Uh, oh yeah, even during the table reads, I remember um, when we were all when we had all gotten to Oakland. Um, Whenever we would read the chapter, you know, whichever song title it was, you just immediately would think about the song and picture it, or just start humbling, humming it, mumbling it. Um, so yeah, it was. It definitely helps you navigate through the story a lot easier just reading the script. There's an astronaut that appears periodically throughout the film. Uh, those scenes look quite uh, difficult to shoot. What was it like? Um, yeah, it was. It was very difficult to shoot an astronaut amongst <laughs> actors. Um, some of it well, was stunt heavy in terms of, you know, needing a rig and needing wires and um, all of that that comes with the post. You know, every time the astronaut's in a shot, the helmet is like a fishbowl 360. So um, you have to, we had to shoot plates of I don't know if this makes any sense at all, but we it was difficult. Um, <laughs> but we actually ended up casting um, the stunt person who actually plays the astronaut. Actually, we looked for a dancer, someone with a dancing background, um, and she she was uh, used to be a ballerina. So it was she was amazing because she could imitate the movements that we needed. Um, as if this like I hope you could feel that those movements um, <laughs> to, to give it yeah that extra flavor of, of like the moon literally it's like I tried to we try to recreate like the moon gravity so without uh, spoiling a bit a crucial bit of the film there's a there's a scene with a car and it's all very chaotic what was that like on set um, uh, it was chaotic <laughs> <laughs> they were definitely was... just wanted to make sure that nobody was you know near the cars while they were actually spinning. I remember that because they, you know, you never know what could happen, but you know the, the stunt drivers, they know what to do. So yeah, it was really cool seeing it happen, but um, like you said, I don't want to ruin anything. So. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it also, ended up yeah. really cool. I mean, sideshows <laughs> side are like, a, it's really specific to Oakland mm -hmm. and the Bay Area. So, um, but yeah, as you said, yeah, go go see the film. It's not, I didn't want it to be like, just like kind of cultural tourism where you're just like watching a sideshow because you go on YouTube and see them if you want. But mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's a big scene that involves a lot of story and plot as well as the car spinning. So, what is so special about Air Jordans? Where do we begin? No. <laughs> um, well, in I think, yeah, yeah, I mean, he was, he was, other than, you know, Chuck Taylor before that, um, Jordan, you know, released the red ones and he, you know, he got fined every time he wore them because they had the red sole. There's a lot of history there. And I think that really he's kind of like the nexus of like hip hop, fashion and basketball. And I think a lot of kids I grew up with and kids in neighborhoods like kicks, um, you know, hip hop, basketball, that's like, he was like someone who got cut from his high school team who made it, who, who became a silhouette. Like, that's goals. Like, that's like a dream right there. So for, for amongst like teenagers, when you're looking for social, people look for social status and symbols that signify that, Jordan kind of encompasses like everything. And so it, I kind of, that's how they become a target as well. Um, and that's the downside, or the dark side of it all, is when the kids start equating their worth uh, in society to like what shoes they have. Um, Materials. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so final question, CJ, I know you're working on an album with your brother. Can you yes. tell me about that? Um, yeah, we've been working on it for quite some time now. Actually, after I finished Kicks was when we like really started and it was originally going to be called Malibu Nights um, but yeah we kind of grew grew out of that title and and uh, really now we're trying to figure out how to uh, like com a lot like this story just start uncomfortable conversations and and uh, 
kind of push the envelope. Um, as you can see now, just with music, it's not a lot of positivity. Um, um, uh, we see great ones like Kendrick doing amazing things. Um, but yeah, we definitely want to be in that realm with, uh, yeah, on on that level, Kendrick level, you know. Uh, and it, it takes a lot of focus, a lot of time, and we've been working on it for a while, but hopefully the project will be done this year. So, yeah.